Kitchens How Tuesday, episode 40. Uh, tonight we're doing something kind of cool. It's kind of a fall dish, but uh, we had a couple of requests for it. And to be honest with you, the minute that Tori said, let's do that, I was like, I could eat that, like a lot of it. So, And it's a really good warm up the next day for dinner and or for lunch dish. So tonight we're going to cook shepherd's pie. Now, a lot of people call it cottage pie, but believe it or not, there is a difference. Does anybody want to take a shot at what's the difference between shepherd's pie and cottage pie? Well, I'll wait I'll wait here. No, it'll take a second. So By the keep way, talking. I'm Jim. That's my wife, Tori. Hey, hey. And uh, we want you to like and share the video as we move throughout the evening. Also, if you could, visit ptkradio.com. And don't miss the Sunshine State Egg Fest coming up this Saturday. I'll be cooking tri-tip sliders. I think we're going to do like uh, cheesesteak sliders. It's going to wind up being that. So cheese sauce with some peppers and onions and uh, some roast tri-tip on my big green egg. Come by and see us. SunshineStateEggFest.com for tickets and info. So Joe said that um, cottage pies with beef. Absolutely. And so then Paul came back and said it. And then so shepherd's it. pies with lamb, yep. traditionally cottage pies with beef. But believe it or not, uh, it, it is an English dish. A lot of people give this credit to the Irish, but I believe it is an English dish. Uh, and a lot of people make this with like Guinness beer, and they do the whole thing and make it an Irish thing because of the potatoes and the beef. Jeremy's asking if it's in your cookbook, and maybe they could look it up. Oh, uh, see, Jeremy, I don't have a cookbook oh, because weird. everybody has a cookbook, and I am not everybody. And <laughs> it turns out I'm kind of lazy. No, <laughs> honestly, cookbooks are a big undertaking, man. I, I mean, we kind of looked into it. And, by the time you pay somebody to, to do the illustration and the press, and it just gets really expensive. And to be honest with you, we would rather just give you the recipes. Every recipe we've done for How Tuesday is right up online at ptkradio.com. Maybe we'll make, like, the most ghetto cookbook ever and call it the most ghetto cookbook ever. I, I think we should do, like, a cook calendar. And maybe have okay. a calendar where every month we, we do two or three recipes and just do it like that. I mean, it's not a lot of recipes, but to be honest with you, uh, a lot of stuff's been done, and I only have a few things that are original. Like, my chili is an original recipe, and it's a, it's a winner. It's a good one. You mean you're not making up all these recipes? That no, 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 no. <laughs> my braised short ribs are good. We do that. So, anyway, we may do something like that. Who knows? Um, okay. Tonight, shepherd's pie, like I said, pretty easy. As you can see, we have uh, your hamburger meat. We're going to do a mix of 80, 20, and 90, 10. Okay. And to be honest with you, I just like a little of both because one has a beefy flavor, one has fat. We have, of course, Idaho potatoes. Yes. We have some Worcestershire sauce, a little yes. bit of flour to make our gravy with. And some chicken stock. Our peas and peas and corn. Peas and corn. Let me get up. Peas and corn. Uh, fresh rosemary and thyme. Why a little bit of tomato. Why are you saying that like the public? You ever heard that? Um, that uh, uh, what was that? Uh, Something about Mary? Oh. Beans and rice. Or beans and franks. You don't even know. <laughs> Play on that. So we're going to make, okay. instead of doing just regular potatoes tonight, we're also going to add a little bit of uh, aged white cheddar to ours to give that extra little oomph. Yeah. Um, and this is an easy dish. It's basically vegetables and beef with mashed potatoes on top, and you bake it off, and that's it. So we're going to make it tonight. Everybody cool with that? I guess. It's not, it's not the way I make it, but it's okay. No, but you know what? That's a great point because here's the thing. Much like a lot of the food that we cook, the, these great stick-to-your-ribs kind of home meals, there are a trillion recipes for this from Marsala wine and red wine in the sauce to Guinness beer, yeah, uh, mushrooms, pearl onions. I mean, you can put anything in this. This is a relatively traditional shot at, uh, at Shepherd's Pie. This is what I'd make you where I knew everybody would eat it, you know. Corn, I put biscuits beans. on mine. See, Tori put biscuits on hers. Dear, <laughs> get up. And, uh, but we're not going to do that tonight. So let's get our potatoes going because we need to do that. Let's All do right. it. So first things first, we start with cold water, but I can go ahead and start warming it up. Okay. Uh, we want cold water because we don't want, when you throw the, uh, the potatoes in, we don't want them to cook on the outside and be raw on the inside. When are you going to cook catfish? Somebody wants to know. Are there any other questions that uh, don't refer to a 30-year-old joke? How was the cottage cheese and Munster lasagna? I, I will be dead honest, not my favorite lasagna. But that wasn't the goal that night. That goal that night was to showcase uh, Miss Gloria, who is a wonderful person. And I thought the story was kind of unique and good. Not my favorite lasagna of all time, but I will tell you, we had it for dinner that night with some friends right after that, and how much was left? None. Literally not one bite right. was left, so uh, everybody enjoyed it, and uh, everybody enjoyed Gloria's company because she's just such an amazing person. How was South Carolina? 
I love South Carolina. Yeah, By the way, that life. property we were seeing at was absolutely gorgeous. It was uh, like a little golf resort thing and really affordable and really pretty. And the golf there is amazingly good. Thank People you. are very nice. And that little spot we went to, like right there on the inlet, was beautiful, right? Yeah, for sure. Lots of great restaurants. We hung out, watched some live music, had a couple cocktails. That was fun. Never, yeah. heard, never heard anybody. They had good drinks. They did. All right. So when you're doing uh, mashed potatoes, the number one thing is? Christy said fish bags. Is that where we were? Did you say fish bags? Yeah, I don't know. Um, what are you drinking It was tuna. Tonight? It's like tuna something, wasn't it? Yeah. Like tuna Tommies or something. I like, I checked us in. Was that what, yeah. What are you drinking tonight? Uh, like actually, tonight? I'm drinking Heineken tonight because I tried to drink another English beer that will remain unnamed and my God. You're allowed to say if beer's yucca or not. Uh, we, we, I tried to drink Boddington tonight. And it was not good. Oh, my Jesus. <laughs> it was not, I mean, it was anti-good. So, do you just cube these? Yeah, but it's important. That's what I want to talk about. Look at how the size is there. You have to keep them even, right? Yeah, we're all about the same size. So we, it, And it's super important. Really, it is because if you want your potatoes to be nice, we're going to whip these potatoes tonight. Usually, when I cook potatoes like this, I actually like mine to be, um, I like them a little chunkier, right? But we're going to whip these tonight because we're going to put them in a piping bag and pipe them on top of our, of our, uh, of our uh, shepherd's pie, really nice. So that's it. So we're gonna just, and we're not gonna do a lot of potatoes tonight because it's just, just you and I. Tan said, um, Boddington tastes like soap. Boddington is, it, it's just, here's the thing. I don't wanna say it's terrible because I'm sure there's somebody out there who loves Boddington. I'm not one of those people. Well, somebody's buying it, right? It's really bitter and. Hi, Josh. I, I mean, just not enough flavor to justify that bitterness, really, in my opinion. But. What's happening, Dwayne? Only men really talk to me on here. I mean, there's a couple. Like, Christy talks. Marissa talks. Uh, Peggy hasn't been on lately. Marissa talks is a Christian man, right? Marissa talks, is it? Well, that's DC talks. You just don't work. Little stupid joke there. So we're going to have to go ahead and one more. I, I don't know if that's enough. And, yeah. and as you can see, we have two containers out here on my left, Tor. Yep. Because we're going to make some filling, and we're going to make a couple of these things. We may give one to somebody as a gift. Maybe Daniel and Andrea want one. Uh, we'll take it down there to them. Are they keto crazy? Are they dieting? No. I thought they were dieting or something. Well, they had soup last night, and Did it they? had pasta in it, so. Well, oh, and by the way, that soup they made looked unbelievable. I, I would love to make soup with um, on here, but it just takes too long. It does. Well, to, to make it right, the soup I like to make, like our friend Kelly show, uh, gave us a... Joanne, you talk too, honey. Uh, gave us a uh, tortellini soup. Yes, which I made for that super duper thing that Kay Rollins is part of. Yep. And um, for identity, I think it's I or I dig, yeah, something like that. And basically, it's uh, abuse women. You know, I never knew this. Maybe you can tell me that there's like a whole thing like dudes who are into abusing women, like take their identities from them and like their credit cards and driver's license so that they can't leave. Because where the hell are they going to go without ID or money or anything? I, I never knew that existed, but oh, it's all called iDignity. And iDignity here locally is a company that takes that deals with women who've dealt with issues like that and helps them get their like their IDs and Social Security. Like that. I had no idea. So we support those guys quite a bit. Yeah, of course. So if you're doing that abuse thing. Um, do you have any filters tonight? I don't, Jeremy, because I'm using the... Oh, really? Um, oh, it's, so you can't, look, look, you can't make a fool out of me? Look, no, oh. that's night. Nice. It's because it's oh. either I have smooth video or I have filters. Oh. We'll go back and forth. My heart is broken that you can't make an absolute fool out of me. Tammy Williams said, hey, from Palatka. Hey, what's up, Danny? How you doing? Do we know each other? Well, why do you have to know her just because well, she's asking Palatka. because they're from Palatka. Look, there's like 43 people there. Jennifer said it's a control thing, of course, about the identity thing. And I think I think men do it... On, I mean, I guess a lot of married people would do it on a, on different levels because like if you, you left me, I would take all your stuff. I would like I would I would render you helpless. I would take everything you had, your identity, everything. I would take it if you if you even thought about it. I would spread a rumor <laughs> <laughs> and call the Orlando Sentinel. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, but uh, all, in all seriousness, I like I literally had no idea that was like a thing. Like no, I, but that I mean that's just like crazy people have that super control massive. Ego control issue, right? Well, yeah. I, I mean, I went through it on some level because my ex-husband took my, like, credit. Like, I had, my credit was bad when I left because he just, like, destroyed it. Bought everything in my name and then never paid a bill. 
So I, I, I guess that's it kind of renders you a little helpless as well. Can I ask you a question? Do you think, did you, did you deserve any of that? No. No? What? Did you deserve? We're going to find out something tonight, buddy. So I, I honestly, um, you know, we obviously love to support those guys. I know our, our friends Tom and Dan support them. And they entered a, uh, I think they entered a soup a while back. But anyway, going back to the story is we did this tortellini soup with, with uh, condensed milk and mushrooms and onion and some fresh herbs. And it is really, really good. John, we've cooked a couple of types of fish. We've cooked mahi. We've cooked um, Cook mahi just couple, Yeah. Um, we cooked mahi just a couple weeks ago with, uh, with that mango... That mango thing, right? Um, they are reminding me that you are the second best known person in Placa to come out of Placa. So, so, no, it's actually probably, it's probably a lot, it's way down there. Because there's Michelle, uh, Michelle McCool, who was in the WWE for many, many years. I didn't watch that. And movie. she's married to The Undertaker. Is, so she's the queen of the dead. I thought The Undertaker was a monster truck. No? Can I tell you something? I'm glad you don't know. It makes me, it makes my heart sing that you think Undertaker is a monster truck. It really, I'm sorry you have no idea. Tonight, you get some of this. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me tonight? Oh, let me tell you. Yeah, John, there's a few episodes. If you guys go to ptkradio.com and go click on How Tuesday in the top right hand section, you'll see all the past episodes there. Yeah. There's a recipe for everything except for like three dishes because Jimmy's Jimmy's a little behind. That's okay. We're gonna put up the lasagna tomorrow, so we're gonna be four dishes behind. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. I tell you what though, that marinara, that 40 minute marinara is no joke. We've made that thing like now probably three or four times. Oh, and great day. Everybody, everybody loves that marinara. Yeah. That, that recipe, by the way, at btkradio.com. So, um, is the egg fest kid, uh, kid friendly? Egg fest is way kid friendly. Totally. My God. Yeah. Um, egg fest is going to be amazing this year. I actually texted Frank Wassey today and I was like, hey man, I'm getting a feeling this thing is going to be gigantic. You know, and to be honest with you, it's worth being gigantic because it is really an amazing event. They, the Wassies kill themselves to pull this off. I mean, really do. And we're camping out. Oh over yeah, we're in Vero this like, weekend. Huh? Oh, we're doing a. Whole, I mean, we're we're in it. Yeah, we're in it. This whole. It's awesome. This is the first year we really our schedule kind of cleared up where we could be part of this thing, and we are so excited to go out there and support it. Not only, you know, because the Wassies are so good to us, and uh, we've created this wonderful relationship. But to be honest with you, this, the whole thing of like being an egghead and being part of that kind of cult is really fun. I mean, it, it really is. I had to explain to a guy this weekend in South Carolina, you know, why would you spend that kind of money on a grill? And I was like, okay, went through the whole pitch. Well, you know how many of those stainless steel grills you're going to buy in your lifetime? Blah, 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 blah. It's like the same thing over and over again. Yeah. But it is completely true, man. You, you spend so much money on those grills and they just blow up in your face. So, I mean, they rock. my fork is missing. Underneath my mirror. What happened, Jimmy? Tori. What happened? Tori. I don't need you. Stop it, dude. I don't. <laughs> what happened? You break all my things. Tori, what happened is. That's why it, I can't have nice stuff. I'm, listen, you know I'm a klutz. Olive oil. Okay. A couple tablespoons. No big deal because we're going to put some butter in there as well. Butter. Butter. That's dead. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, what do you think about salting garlic while you're chopping it? I don't. I never heard of that. Why would I do that? I don't know. Um, Jimmy broke it. That's where it went. Um, they want to know where they can get one of those cutting boards. I'm going to... I guess gonna we're going to have to order them. Yeah. The thing is, we didn't want to order them because, honestly, when we first started doing this, we didn't want to like, we didn't want to be like, hey, let's sell you a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Like, we didn't want to be that way. You know, we don't want to be like, hey, we want you to enjoy the show. And, you know, maybe down the road, if we produce a hat or a t-shirt or something, you'd be into it. But I, I think we should probably do... Probably do the, uh, the cutting boards. Okay. So what we're going to do, Tori, yep. is while our potatoes are cooking, this is a really good time to do this. Because you got to remember, man, once these potatoes are done, we can, can let them sit. Then when this gets in the, when we get our filling done, whip these potatoes up, put this thing together, and throw it in the oven. Then we're going to have a few minutes to just kind of hang out. Okay. While our meat, or while our shepherd's pie browns. Okay. Um, do you use a garlic press, or do you like chopping... So garlic presses are great if I'm doing a bunch of garlic. The thing is, I don't like getting it out. And only pressing two or three cloves. I mean, if I'm going to make, like when I make my chili, chili. Yeah. when you're doing 40 cloves of garlic or something like that, either you buy it pre-chopped, which I hate doing, 
because it just doesn't have the same flavor. Um, but if not, I like running my knife through it. To be honest with you, I like chopping and stuff with my knife to keep my skill set good. So for the people that are just joining, what are we cooking? We're doing shepherd's pie tonight. Just okay. a good old traditional shepherd's pie. And, and look, I'm going to encourage you guys that when you make one of these things, make two of these things. Okay. Why not? Because here's the thing, like I was saying before, they keep, they're really, really awesome at, uh, at, at packing for lunch the next day or for having for dinner the next day after that. Everybody likes it. Yeah, and it was, maybe we'll do a pre-order for, for it. What? Um, for the um, cutting board. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. So when I chop carrots, a lot of people are like, there's a hundred ways to do it. They're kind of a pain. But I like to cut my carrot into a quarter and just go right down the carrot and the, right down the carrot. And the cool thing is the carrots are kind of slippery, so kind of boop, boop, boop. Gets a good, now these are gonna be a little different because of course carrots are cylindrical, so you're gonna have a way to cut it there. But just to give you another heads up on how I do that. Um, do they keep well? Do we think that? What, they, shepherd's pie? Yeah. Oh yeah, they, you can freeze, freeze these it? things. Oh yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Easily, certainly freeze it, so. Maybe we'll take ours down to Daniel and Andrea. Yeah, so we'll, and when you do the big knives, like don't, don't use your, use physics, you know, use your tools. Run it down that way. You know, if you try to put it right on top into it, if your knife's not sharp, that's where you can get into those situations where you're like, you're cutting yourself. And, you know, and again, if you need to take it down again. Okay, Jeremy said that you would use um, salt when cutting garlic because it turns it into more of a paste. Oh, I mean, I've seen that done. I, I've never done that. Um, I don't really, because we're going to cook this garlic down. It's going it's, to, you don't need to really need it to be a paste. Uh, when, when working with carrots, let me say this, this is kind of important. Okay. So carrots are sweet. Yep. So you'll hear, you'll see a lot of dishes, a lot of the old school chefs, what they'll do is they'll add carrots to something. Chili's a big one because they can cook basically out, yep. but they render that, that great natural sweetness. Because when you eat a carrot, it's sweet. Be very careful when cooking with carrots. Don't try to get so many in there because you don't want to over sweeten your dish. And believe it or not, it, it will add this odd sweetness to it that, that you, you know, I'm not saying you're gonna, it's not gonna ruin anything. It's just not gonna be exactly, you're, it's not gonna get that super savory thing you're, you're really looking for. So, I'm just gonna do it. And a lot of people put celery in this. I'm not a fan of that. So we're just gonna put probably. Mike Oliver said shepherd's pie is his favorite. Really? I think he's uh, wanting that is other. Is he angling? That, that, other, that other pan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So we have our cast iron. Yeah. And just for you guys, because you bitched so much at me, mm -hmm. I got the rubber. Thank God, so we don't have to hear that. The rubber thing, so we don't have to hear that. So we're gonna let this pan get nice and warm. Do we have any more kosher salt? I think we're out. We are out of kosher salt. How does that happen in our house? I don't know. And we just, oh, because it didn't. Awesome, because I hate using the salt. It just has a, kosher salt has a kind of warm, so onions and carrots, and you can see this is going to be quite a bit of filling because you really don't need a lot of this because we're still have hamburger and herbs. And when our hamburger renders out, which you'll see, we're not going to drain this. We're going to use that fat to make our gravy. All right. Gravy. You get a little excited over the gravy I, thing, huh? I do. I am really excited for this fish. I'm super hungry. Is all we have to eat today? Let me eat for a while. Bit of leftover food from Bosphorus. Somebody likes to give their wife a shepherd's pie. What do you think that is? I, don't, I honestly don't even want to venture a guess <laughs> because I know the people who watch this show. <laughs> Some of them. It is not solid. Uh -huh. Do you want me to try to flip this? I really don't want you to touch it uh, because last time you burnt your. Put the top of my and right now, Tori, by the way, is raging on a pain pill because she broke her butthole. Jimmy, don't say oh, that but, while I mean, cooking. But, I'm sorry. Dan just lifted a magnet off your truck. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Take them all. As long as you do something with them. All right, salt and pepper. Yep. So we're just going to cook these for about, I don't know, probably three or four minutes. Okay. We don't need them to get completely soft because we're going to continue to cook more and more stuff. So, do we get the onions translucent? You can get them translucent. That's fine. Okay. Um, and then what we're going to do is <laughs> pea, Mike. peas and corn going last because they're frozen. They will come back to life as they steam and they don't need to be cooked. Uh, garlic goes in at, with the herbs go in with everything else. So we have some fresh thyme. 
Okay. Which is an absolute mandatory. By the way, if, if you ever ask me what my least favorite thing to do is in the kitchen. Daniel's texting me while I'm filming and I can't open okay. it. And what I'm doing is this. Okay. I hate doing this. This is time and it is such a pain in the butt. Do you have too much time on your hands? <clears throat> so anyway, no. I honestly can't believe you just did that. Why would you do that in my house? Why would you do that in my house? All right. Why would you make that Walter, joke? Walter, I broke my butt because I fell from the top step of my second floor all the way down to the first floor. In front of a mirror so she had to see the entire thing happen. Yeah. It's kind of funny if you think about it. I'm glad she's okay. Uh, and I'm glad she's okay because I was playing golf with my son and I did not want to leave. So, I mean, I'm in love and all, but... <laughs> Mario said it doesn't look like you have that much time on your hand. No? Is, it, is it a Mario that we know? Well, I don't know. How many Marios do you know? None. <laughs> okay. I don't know any Marios. Okay. Turn it up a little bit. Yep. Our potatoes are boiled crazy right now. Okay. All right. Are you going to... Okay, so shepherd's pie. Yeah, shepherd's pie. When's the uh, first time you had it? Uh, kid, you know, my mom made it a couple times and uh, liked it. And then, you know, again, when you're, also, this is good. If you're, like, stretching your dollars, you know, I know a lot of people get in that situation when they're stretching their dollars. God knows where I've been there. Oh, God. oh yeah. We... You know, much like spaghetti, this is a really good dish to last a long time that is cheap. I mean, this is really not, you're talking potatoes, the basic stuff, guys, honestly. You don't have to have fancy cheese in here. You don't have to have half the stuff in here. You could do this with just frozen corn, frozen peas, uh, your potatoes, and uh, you don't have to use cream. You can use milk, whatever, and you can get this dish going and feed a lot of people for a very little amount of money, which we love. We love the aspect of uh, saving dough while we're cooking. It's a real good middle of the week dish. Yeah, John said that if you put your time in a bottle, it'll last longer. Unfriend him. Can you, can you log off? It means this much to me. Can you log off with the broadcast, unfriend him, and then everybody will understand. And then, then we'll get him back on in a minute. Hey, are, you are you guys tips? cool with that? Unfriending the guy who just said that? <laughs> are you going to touch tips tonight? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. There we go. Thanks, guys. Danielle, we're going to have an extra, an extra pan of this stuff. If you guys don't want to cook, I'm sure they've already eaten, though. They, they eat early. All right, so let's go ahead and get our hamburger in. Okay. So we're going to put, not all of this in. And this put, is 80-20, right? This is 80-20. And a little bit of, uh, mm. probably won't use all this. Mm. There. Perfect. And I'll take, I'm going to let that cook for a second before I even start breaking that down. Why? Yeah, because honestly, it, I think it breaks down a little bit better if you let it cook a second. Rather than, because it's all sticky now. You say honestly a lot, which makes me feel like you always lie. <laughs> I have no idea why you'd say that. No idea why you'd say something like that. The Percocet. Yeah, is that what it is? Well, let's stop taking those. <laughs> let's get away from that as quickly as possible. <laughs> Okay, so our garlic's gonna go in, believe it or not, when our hamburger starts cooking down, we're gonna put our garlic in and then our herbs. So we have a little bit of rosemary. Uh, and you have to be careful with rosemary as well, guys. This is one that can take a dish over. Did you just lick your hands, Cremella? Just said you licked your hands. I didn't lick my hands. Actually, I just walked over while you're- Oh, maybe she wants you to lick your, oh baby, this is turning into a, uh, a thing. Why is it, what's going on? Well, Cremella wants you to lick your hands. Why would you say something like that? <laughs> Man, nothing smells like Christmas. I mean, you smell rosemary, it smells like a Christmas tree. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh. So beautiful. All right, love it. So we're going to break this down. Megan said lamb is actually required to make an actual shepherd's pie. She is right. What we are really making is cottage pie, but if you read about it, what's her name again? Miss Know-It-All? Megan. 
Uh, Megan, believe it or not, most shepherd's pies are still referred to right now as just shepherd's pie. It's not a cottage pie. It doesn't have to have lamb or beef. I think it's internationally recognized now. Is it internationally known? Do you rock the microphone? Is this Because we this know a, you're stupid. Contagious. Is this happening all night? Um, Maisie said that uh, you forgot your hair. <laughs> Maisie said Mr. Egg forgot his hair. I will, I will punch a two-year-old in the neck. <laughs> what beer are you have drinking? You, have you met me? What boring beer are you drinking? Heineken. Why? His body is like goat piss. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to buy it. And I couldn't find Newcastle. That's what I wasn't going to drink is Newcastle, but I don't know. I couldn't find any at Publix. Um, they want to know if they use uh, ground turkey instead because they're healthy yep. people unlike us. Yep. Do they need to adjust the seasoning Nothing. at all? Do it exactly like this. Okay. But get the 93.7 turkey. Don't get the don't get the extra lean turkey. Okay. Get the 93.7. It, it's way better. Hey, Michelle from Eustis. So do you cook it all the way through, like no paint, or do you, do you leave it a little paint? No, 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 we're going to cook it all the way through because we still okay. have a lot to go. Okay. So here is our garlic and rosemary and thyme. Nancy, I believe we're using 80-20 beef. Yeah, we are. Because you know, see that fat? We want it. We need it to be our gravy. Okay. Now, smell it now, please. Oh, I, it smells amazing. Yes. It, when you throw the herbs and the garlic in there, it starts coming alive like Frankenstein. That is a terrible reference. I would, yeah. Okay. Um, can you, how about mashed cauliflower instead of mashed potatoes? Absolutely. Yeah. Guys, honestly, you can do all that stuff. God, you can make this so low fat. You could. So if you did the 93.7 turkey, that's a great suggestion, by the way. We should give somebody, a, who, who suggested Megan. that? Megan. Megan, we're going to give you something from the show. So we want you to contact us with our instant, our private message thing. Yep. And Tori will send you out either like a koozie or a decal or something, okay? Thanks for that great suggestion. 100% right. If you want to take this like low, low 93.7 turkey meat, and potato or the cauliflower mash. Yep. Dude, you have a great wholesome meal, tastes great, and really low calorie. I mean like real low calorie. Okay. Now you have to add a little fat to be able to make your gravy, which we're about to do. I yep. have, I've never put gravy on my No, no you're making a, you're making basically the sauce. So we're gonna do a little bit of Worcestershire, which is probably about a teaspoon. Okay. Again, you gotta be careful with that stuff, we'll take it Salt, right? Uh, we're gonna do a little we're gonna do a little tomato paste. All right, smell that now. See, every little ingredient when you start putting it in there, it starts kind of doing a little something different to the. So, did we already talk about how this dish was basically uh, for basically four people? Yeah, it was. Um, to it was leftover meat. Leftover meat, and they would potatoes. Everybody had potatoes. Right, that's exactly it. And they would just chop up what they had and put it in a. Yeah, that's it. This dish was one. Tori's one hundred thousand percent right. This dish was really kind of created through necessity, like almost everything good is, is they wanted a way to get rid of uh, meat that they'd already cooked. And the way to do it was to take it, just like Tori said, add some veggies, put some uh, put some mash on top, and you're all solid. I think um, these are ready to go, so we're gonna go ahead and... They just uh, asked about 100% duck fat. Yeah, you can, you can cook this with duck fat. 100% barf. What do you mean barf? I hate duck fat. Okay, so this is our flour. You got a whole... I know, I see it. Probably about two tablespoons, nothing big. Okay. What happened? Yeah, we got a little hole in our flour there. Now, let this cook for a second. A lot of people get in there and they, they put the flour in there and stir it in. They're like, oh, well, it's, it's all done. Flour has to cook. If you're making gravy or sauces or whatever, you want to cook that flour and get that raw flour flavor out. Like when you're making a roux, before you know what a roux is, right? Yeah. That's basically what we're doing here. We're making a roux inside this dish. So we're going to let this cook down for a second, and then we're going to add chicken stock to it. We'll get that gravy going, that, that real good uh, that, that liquid that we love in here. So not beef stock? We're going to no, use chicken No, no, chicken stock? stock. Okay, why? Well, to be honest with you, beef stock is pretty, and it already has salt and other things added to it. Some of it, some of it doesn't, but I think it gets a little too beefy. So I actually want the flavors to showcase, and I don't want it to come too compounded. They said that maybe um, that some people use stout 
and then yeah yeah i said that earlier in the show guys we'll use guinness okay. and it's like we're going to use chicken sock a lot of guys will use guinness beer to thicken this okay any liquid you can do it with water if you want you can put milk in here it doesn't really matter okay it's going to make the stock we're just going to use stuff that has flavor in it see the flour on the bottom for it? how it's kind of making that it's already kind of making that sheen yeah. so we can blend do this now perfect blend your chicken stock we like organic stocks guys 365 at Whole Foods. That's what we get. Yep. It's the cheapest uh, organic, and it tastes great. So you'll notice I did not measure that. And there's a reason. Look, it's already look at it, it's already turning into the gravy. So it's amazing, right? And so I haven't even added the peas or the carrot or the corn to it. Scott said he just got here. We have to start over, please. No. Yeah, we're making shepherd's pie, Scotty. <laughs> Cottage pie, shepherd's pie, however you want to say it. And this flour, even a couple tablespoons, is going to soak up quite a bit of this stock. And it's going to come off the bottom. It's going to simmer down. It's going to thicken right up. My shepherd's pie meat never looked like this. So I'm pretty excited about this. Okay. So let's go ahead and get our pea. We use the Publix Organic Green Wines because we like them. And these are the perfect size containers. And they actually stay really well in the fridge for corn. Is that like half the bag or whatever? Um, probably about half cup. Okay. Peas and corn. That's right, Gary. About another half cup of that. And obviously you're going to see pretty quickly what you usually see when you dig into a shepherd's pie. Oh, you have this man. beautiful, and you should smell, God, I wish this was smell of vision guys. Yeah. Those herbs and that garlic, all this comes together and makes this beautiful meat filling that is all ready to go. We're going to do a little taster on that tornado. Okay. Make sure that's all solid. It does smell great, guys. You need salt and pepper. I think it's so rude that you didn't give me a bite. Salt? You doing all this work, holding this camera? <laughs> Getting that work? <laughs> Actually, you know what? I think it also needs a little bit more Worcestershire. Oh, I, I agree with that. They said you need to hurry up before the voice comes on. we got to oh, be done with this. sorry. Oh, they got from a hot there or something in there, right? Is there an Orlando guy? Is that why we're doing that? I, I think know. there is. Carmela said it looks great. And okay. she's so glad that you licked your hand. Okay, so that's done. Mm -hmm. So we're going to turn that off. Okay. Now let's go whip some potatoes up and get this going. All right. Where are the potatoes? I'm going to right here. So you just kind of get this. So, potatoes. Okay. Don't ever cook them. They'll soak up water. The big bamboozle, how you spell it, Jimmy? The what? I don't know. That's just what somebody said. All right, so whipped potatoes are as easy as it gets. Here's what you need. Lots of butter. Can you, uh, okay, so we already talked about um, using cauliflower. Mm -hmm. Is this how you would prepare the cauliflower as well? Uh, not with butter. I mean, right. but you know, if you want, you could, I would say skim milk. Okay. And like a, a margarine, if you have a, a mar like a, an olive oil based margarine or something you want to do. Yep. You can do that. You just don't want, probably gonna need more butter, my love. Um, what's the best choice on the potatoes? I, we just use Idaho. They said thank you for teaching us. Oh, thank you. Thank you for watching. By the way, if you like the video, guys, like and share. Yeah, you and can remember share. that we will have that recipe up at ptkradio.com soon. Yep. Um, we do have a busy week this week with uh, Egg Fest coming up. Oh, and I think I'm going to start doing the um, uh, posting your plate again. It's not going to be a weekly thing because it's a lot of people post a lot of stuff. So I think we're going to do like a monthly thing. So maybe we'll start a group under the Primetime Kitchen page that you can join to where you can post all of your plating dishes in each month. We'll okay. talk, we'll pick one, you know, sounds on good. the show or whatever. I think that'll be really cool. That sounds great. Yeah. Heavy cream. We're going to do a little bit of heavy cream. All right. And then we're going to use some half and half. Now, again, you can use, you can use um, skim milk, whatever you want here. You just got to have some liquid. So and how long did we boil those potatoes? Uh, I don't know, probably about 15 minutes, 15 minutes. You remember when you cube them up like that, you don't have to go crazy. Okay. We're going to put in our first wave of white cheddar. What kind of cheddar is that? It's uh, this is the Cabot Vermont white. Okay. It's not too stinky, but it is, it is a little stinky, which is good. You want a little bit of flavor in there? Hey, Brandon, we're cooking um, uh, shepherd's, shepherd's pie. pie tonight. Now, I'm just going to turn these potatoes over 
to get that cheese underneath real quick. And then we're gonna whip these things crazy. All right? Yep. Let's do it. Pardon the noise, guys. That is a Walgreens blender or mixer. It is? That was $9.99. It's got three speeds. Walmart. Walgreens. Oh, okay. Because we were at a pinch and we didn't want to go to Walmart. Okay. So, Corey, you can come over here. Yep. And you can already see, we really aren't going to have to work hard because we cook these potatoes pretty darn good. Everybody's eating with potatoes. What's the key for when it comes to whipped potatoes? Get those guys to know. I don't know if they can hear you. You may not hear me? Sorry. I don't know, I don't know if they can or not. All right. He is on. Oh, man. I think we got lucky fast. Um, They're laughing because you said you put the cheese underneath. No, <laughs> no. Really? I love being 14. <laughs> they love it. I love it, too. Okay. This is done. That cabbage cheese is Polk County Fire. It is Polk County Fire, for damn sure. Uh, don't overbeat, they said. Yeah, do not overbeat. Go turn into glue. Hey, are we cooking at Egg Fest on Saturday? Yes. Hell yeah, we are. What are we making? Uh, we're making, uh, we're either gonna do, mm, we need more cheese. We're either gonna do just, we're gonna do brisket, sli or not brisket, tri-tip sliders. Yeah. But I think we're gonna wind up doing like a cheesesteak thing with some peppers, onions, and a little cheese sauce on there. We're gonna put them on that brand new roll from uh, from Sara Lee, that Arzano like bun thing, like yeah. a dinner dinner bun. They're gonna be right next door to us, right? Yeah, they're gonna be. Right, we're all gonna be right there. Me, uh, Ron, and those guys from Bimbo, and then Steve from Porky's. All all great sponsors of the show, which we deeply, deeply appreciate. Did you just put that entire block in there? Are you mad? No, I'm not mad. I just can't eat. For the next two days. Sorry. You can try to fool these people. <laughs> Nobody believes that you're not going to eat for four days. Okay. Are you calling me fat? Like I'm just saying nobody believes it. All these people. Okay. Okay. So what are we doing? We're loading this bee up. That's what we're doing. Actually, Tori, you know what? We may um. Oh, Daniel, we don't have another one. No, oh, I got a little one right there, Daniel. Daniel, you're fine. We'll get you, buddy. All right. So here's where it's going to get interesting. We're going to give this a shot, Tori. Okay. We're going to put these steaming hot potatoes. This <laughs> is going to be really interesting. <laughs> steaming hot potatoes into this bag. And instead of just spreading them on top, we're going to try to do a little piping. And they're whipped crazy. And they're hot. If that bag starts to melt. Are you going to laugh? Yes. Why wouldn't you, right? I'm already not liking our chances here. These are already coming on tip. <laughs> hey, you know what? This is what we do. We try stuff. Oh, you see them going everywhere, Tori? Yeah, I do. This is awesome. It's like a show. But you know what? You're going to be able to clean this up pretty quick, though. i got to tell you. Oh. I have, <laughs> I have faith in you. All right, mm -hmm. I think that's enough. Right. Um, JR said, why didn't you just leave it in the cast iron? Oh, and just do it from there? Yeah. Huh. Oh, I think it's working. Oh, you wanted to just get fancy tonight. That That's the whole thing. Look at that cheese. There's so much cheese in there. There's a lot of cheese in there. And this bag is hot as hell. And this nib is not working as well as it should. Put that thing in a cup to stabilize it. I don't know what that means. I don't know, but I'm gonna tell you what. Babe, it's so good. I'm proud of you. I think it's burning my damn fingerprints <laughs> off. There we go. Okay. Oh, you got a nubbin. Yeah. It's gonna blow the bag out. Um, what can I get in there to get that That's out? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Gosh, dog it, it's gonna blow it out. Come on, get in there. What are you doing? All right, we're gonna try one more thing here. Okay. So we're doing shepherd's pie tonight, guys. And uh, I don't think I have any. Oh, uh, thanks, Scott. Any... Scott said you're talented. Oh. He does not believe that. Tor, we're just gonna take a chance. All right. If this sprays everywhere, Jimmy, it's gonna be hilarious, A. But B, 
<laughs> I, I have a bad, me. bad feeling about this busted up. Oh, God. Oh! Why would it do this to me on this night when I need this to go well, Tori? Maybe this rosemary stalk will save us. Maybe it did. Let's try again. Okay. Uh, it's trying. It's like my old 14 year old dog trying to go, uh, gosh dog it, how does that happen? Okay, it's fine. Uh, cut, a, cut it off. There you go. So. Perf. <laughs> They get the idea. Yeah. That's fine. So it's okay. All right. So what we also want to do is take a little bit more of this cheese. Right on top of the cheese. A little bit. Boop, 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 boop. A little bit of salt on top. Yep. A little bit of pepper on top. And this is ready to go, right? Yep. It's going in the oven. This cooks. <clears throat> these cook very fast. So we've got 15, 20 minutes. We've got it at 400 degrees. Yep. Yum. All right. So... Let's watch Jimmy clean now. Yeah, let's watch me clean. <laughs> so, uh, how did everybody uh, like the, the Gloria Gaynor episode? Did anybody like that? Everybody understand kind of the whole idea there? Looks great. Next time, uh, JR said put some fiber in it. Fiber. Like benefiber? Benefiber? What would I put benefiber in it? <laughs> well, you gotta get you your fiber, fiber what, intake. What? Maybe it's to offset the cheese that you put in there. Can cheese stop you up? Cheese does stump you up. Okay. But I'm not a hundred. I'm not George Bush. I'm going to be fine. I don't know. Where's mm. your hair? All right, a couple things while that's cooking, all right? Okay. So, egg fest. Uh, if you don't have a big green egg. It was a very good episode, Tim. Thank you. Said. Appreciate it. Uh, big green eggs are expensive. I'll be the first one to tell you. Uh, here's where they win. Uh, so, if you count how many times you buy one of those four or $500 stainless steel grills only to have it rot out in three years and throw it away and then do that again. Uh, the egg will last you a lifetime. Matter of fact, it does have a lifetime warranty. I personally witnessed one get replaced that was 25 years old that got a crack in it. No car, no charge, they just gave them a brand new one. Um, I strongly suggest it. If you take cooking outside, and look, if you're just somebody who likes to throw a couple burgers and dogs on the grill for 4th of July or get you know, whatever, I mean, you're gonna be okay with your gas grill. Right. If, if you wanna cook food that has like a game-changing flavor, Man, you know what? Ask for it for Christmas, Father's Day, whatever. Uh, and this week will be the opportunity to do that. And here's why. Because you will not get a better deal on a big green egg than you can this weekend at Wassie's Meats or at the Egg Fest. LJ uh, just got one. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, if you, I think they still have demo eggs. So basically, they have 100 cooking teams. There's 75 cooking teams that have anywhere from three to six members, and they all have an egg. So if you buy the demo egg, it's lightly used just for one day, basically and you can get it at a great discount. I suggest if you're gonna start, you have to get an egg in a nest, that's the thing it sits in or you can roll it around, and a plate center. You really don't need a whole lot more than that to start with. Then you can start getting the idea of what it's like to cook direct at that high heat, cook indirect at low heat for a long term, long time. And we're gonna do a combination of that with our tri-tips this weekend. So we're gonna sear them like crazy on the hot grill, then we're gonna put our plate center in, and our multi-level, and we're gonna get like five of those things going at one time at 350 degrees for about an hour and 15 minutes. And they'll be done, and that's great because you have the beautiful flavor on the outside, and of course, that charcoal flavor that comes with a big green egg that is just unmistakable. It's just so unbelievably good. Uh, but this weekend will be a good time to get that, guys, because it's gonna have some great deals. Yeah, for sure. Um, like I said, if you, it's $29.99 for a taster's ticket. Um, and that's seven hours. And you get there at nine, you can literally eat the entire time there if you wanted to. No one's gonna stop you, there aren't limits. You can eat as much as you want, as often as you want. Uh, there are also demos, like from our friend Big Green Craig, and plenty of other chefs will be showing demos as well. Jess Priles is gonna be there from Hardcore Carnivore. I also think that um, what we'll do on Saturday is we'll go live a couple times. We'll kind of cut oh, in because a lot of people want to see a Big Green Egg episode. Unfortunately, our kitchen is on the second floor and our Big Green Egg is on the first floor, so it would be too difficult to do it on a How Tuesday. But we did do a tri-tip for the Super Bowl, I think it was, yep. and we did show a little video. And you can see that at ptkradio.com. Uh, we do have a YouTube channel. If you'd like to subscribe, we would love that. Uh, it would be awesome. We're trying to get a few uh, people in there so we can provide some more videos and stuff. Yeah. For sure. Um, uh, what other events do we have coming up to where I know we're meeting with uh, the guys over at Tapatura tomorrow? Yeah, we're going to do a walkthrough because we are going to probably do a live episode from there. Probably not a PTK. I mean, I'm sorry. Probably not a How Tuesday live, but a live episode nonetheless. 
um, cooking paella. Yeah, yeah paella. Show us how to. Which is awesome because paella is one of those things you can really blend into your to your like with meatloaf or spaghetti. You can start making paella and find what your family likes: chicken and sausage. Add some shrimp in there. Some people put you know clams in there, of course. But you can make it a bunch of different ways. And it's one of, again, it's rice and meat. It's a great great way to cook. And by the way, I think I should apologize to you guys. We haven't done a live of it in quite a while. And we really have been trying to make a couple things happen, but because of the nature of our deal with the radio station, it's kind of weird how we have to promote things. So um, again, I appreciate your patience. We do want to come out and do something live again. We're, I think we're going to do like Tom and Dan do. They do meetups where we can just say, hey, we'll work with a bar or a restaurant, create a little deal. You don't like pay a fee or anything. You just come in. If you want to eat it, you can. Uh, we're working with Dekine uh, Pokey uh, Truck soon and stuff like that so hopefully we can make some things like that happen we really want to get out there it's just we want to make sure it's a great deal for everybody before we roll out we, we don't want to we don't want to do anything where it seems like a rip off we're just not down for that yeah we actually have a meeting tomorrow night uh at the baron peacock oh yeah um, because we may do you know a trivia event like ptk trivia yeah 100 pt ptk would, trivia yeah. would everybody be down that's not right winter part would you guys be down for like a, a food trivia show that tori and i host at a bar that has great beer, and then maybe we could just kind of come up with a little something to snack on that we provide. I think that'd be awesome. I think it'd be cool. Or we can have food trucks, a couple yeah, food trucks come out. Yeah, 100%. Out. We don't really have, we just want to host some stuff. It's so difficult to uh, to get a restaurant involved, especially now that everybody's so busy, to do like one of these primetime kitchen events. And, you know, like Bite 30 is coming up soon, and Magical Dining will be coming up before you know it, and then everybody will be going out there and doing that. So it's kind of hard for us to wiggle in there. Yeah, everybody said yeah on the trivia. Right I love on. it. We'll do it. Let's we're, do it. We're gonna, we'll meet with those guys tomorrow night, and we'll let you know next week, or maybe even before that on Facebook or, or Twitter or Instagram, when we're going to do that. We're just going to plan that and do it. And we may just do it once a month, set up shop somewhere, and just go do that once a month, or everybody knows we can come out and have a good time doing that. Yeah, that, that would be awesome. Um, we are actually making uh, shepherd's, shepherd's pie. pie tonight, and we are waiting for it to cook. And it is on its way. So we're just answering a few questions while we do that. What are, we, what are you cooking this on? What do you mean? Temperature. Oh, 400. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, because I want that. I want the potatoes up top to crisp. Oh, and about, yeah. And I did get my potatoes a little, I put a little too much liquid in there so that it hold that nice shape. Okay. And that's, I even told you not to do it. And I sat there and did it. So it's that easy. Uh, they do taste good. They're going to be awesome there. But I actually like them with a little bit more body and not as much uh, liquid in there. Um, they said also Crooked Can. They That was a, that was a great PTK That was a great event. event. You know, I, I heard the, the brewer that we know there, Ken, I think he is with someone else now. That doesn't mean we can't go out there. But we also want to do something in Ellipsis Brewing. Uh, these guys have really come on the scene. And look, we, we know a lot of the brewers in town. And we've been doing, since tori has been doing Pretty Little Pints. By the way, if you haven't followed Tori's show called Pretty Little Pints, her and Jackie Mick go to pubs and do a show about drinking beer. And we've talked to a lot of the guys in the beer business, and they think Ellipsis has something special going. So we're really excited to do something with them. And they've already like given us the okay to make it happen. Yeah, so I we think just have to find the right event. Yep, exactly. Um, also, by the way, if you like any of our merch, like you'll see us drinking out of pint glasses occasionally. We do have the decals that we're selling. That's from the Jim Colbert show. But if you go to ptaradio.com and go to the shop section, you can see that. Also, you can learn about Heather, my co-host on the show. She's awesome. Um, also, we have a guest host on Primetime Kitchen coming up in the next two weeks, not this week, but two weeks after that, uh, Fias Cara, who is the uh, food editor and critic, I believe, for the Orlando Weekly. Yep. Um, and by the way, we have something going with those guys soon as well. We're going to be possible to uh, be a part of Bite. So lots of cool stuff coming up. We're just busy as hell. Um, so and, they want to know, would you, um, do you broil this at the end um, to get that crisp that you're looking for? I can, because be, honestly... It's cooked. I'll be, I'll be dead it's honest hot. with you. So you don't really have to do a lot of what we're doing right now because the filling's already hot. I mean, it was hot going in. Okay. So a lot of times you can just cook this, like Tori's saying, for like 10 minutes and then broil the top so we can get it done. We can do that right now. Yeah. So let's just get a broil and let's go start. Cool. So we'll get the upper broil and that'll give us some nice, uh, and you can see it's already crisping right there. Yeah. So this will do it, get it real good and we'll get you guys on your way. Cool. Shepherd's Pie tonight, guys. Super easy ingredients. If you like the video, like and share. We try to be as silly as possible. Mm -hmm. We have 40 episodes up. And we have recipes for almost everything out there. And the cool thing about the show is when you go back, if you want a marinara, you can go back and find that marinara that's part of that other dish. Or you want to learn how to make these mashed potatoes, you can do that. Uh, that little mango salsa that we made last week was a gigantic hit. A lot of people text us and say, hey, man, I love that. It goes on everything. And they're right, it does. 
it goes on everything. That recipe is there. So a couple of people are asking if maybe um, instead of like a, you can do like a cooking like a lesson. So maybe we figure out what kind of knives we need for whatever kind of cuts that we're doing. They want to they want to know like what kind of pots and pans to buy. Oh, and stuff you know like what? That. We get a lot of that. That's yeah. so crazy. You know, I think we probably should do that. Yeah. Just take an episode and say, hey, here's why I like this, and here's the price point. You know, of course, with, with cookware, you can spend as much money as you want. Right. But we have demonstrated quite well here that you don't really have to spend a ton of money. I think the the number one thing with cookware is you want a good, uh, you want something that's durable, uh, that will clean, that will stand up to a good beating, and that you are, that you like looking at because you want to have that for a while. Tammy made your mango salsa. Oh, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's My totally mangoes good. are a little tart. When you eat the sweet mangoes, it's even better. And the I like champagne the, mangoes. Oh, yeah, the champagne ones are the best. And I like to let it sit a little bit. So when we made it, we had to kind of serve it immediately. I like I make that first like an hour ahead of time and throw it in the fridge to let that lime work on all those uh, all those veggies and break them all down. So it's got a lot of flavor. So that's a, a good hint there if you want to do that. Um, the knife thing. So here's what I would tell you. So we have shoe knives. Uh, we are... Um, we we're so nice to uh, have the Wassies gift us a couple knives. And these are a little bit more on the expensive side. I think this knife right here is about 160 bucks. Uh, again, this is a life knife. But just to show you that I ain't all bougie, um, this is literally the first really good quality knife I ever bought. And I still have it. You can see the logo there. It's Hinkle. And this knife is still super sharp and does a great job. The difference is you can see the top of this blade is a little thicker. So it makes making delicate, like when you're really dicing, it makes it a little more difficult because the blade's a little bit more bulky. But I also have a smaller knife of that same set. Oh, that's the paring knife of that set. And then I have another knife of that set as well. And I've had that knife set forever, and I think the whole thing costs 130 bucks. Jeremy said it's burning. It's not, but look at that. Oh my lord, it's done now. Can we get it out of there now? Yes. Let's do that. I'm not gonna burn off my hands, I promise. I don't know, buddy. Holy crap. Holy shepherd's pie. Yes. All right, guys. Wow. So what you have here is a homemade shepherd's pie. Got our potatoes on top nice and crispy with that beautiful little coating and cheese. It's going to give us a beautiful little crispy, crunchy, cheesy texture monster there as we go down in. Because this is, of course, you saw what we had there. <laughs> the filling is not doesn't have a lot of texture. So... Get your potatoes as crispy as you want. We did them with the broiler. You can just let them cook, and they'll cook a little bit more of that down. If you broil them, really pay attention because, I mean, the broiler can go from zero to zero. ruined yeah. quick-like. So this is perfectly done. And here's what I strongly suggest. You want, you're want you going to want to let this sit at least 15 minutes. Oh, yeah, for sure. Before you start digging there because that is basically food lava. Mm. So that is our shepherd's pie. Super easy to make and really, really easy to freeze, like I could take this right now, freeze it solid, and give it to a friend, and they reheat it, and it's going to be perfect. Throw in the 350 oven with tenting on it, you know, or 250, sure, with some uh, tenting of uh, foil, so you don't get and the potatoes heat. overdone, mm -hmm. and just get it warm again. And they're they're delicious. Plus, of course, who doesn't like potatoes and beef? That's pretty much the thing. So that we'll have this recipe up soon, guys. Real easy stuff. And again, you don't have to use a lot of stuff. Maybe you want mushrooms in yours. Do that. I mean, I'm not stopping you. Bars. Mushrooms, green onions, whatever you want to do. Put them right in there. Seriously, make them how you want them. This is ours. This is a traditional uh, shepherd's pie with your corn and the English peas and garlic and onion and all that fun stuff. And we use chicken stock instead of like Guinness beer. But again, it's up to you. You can use beer, beef stock, whatever you want. Make that gravy exactly how you want. Uh, but guys, we want you to make this dish for sure. If you don't mind, like and share the video. Uh, and visit ptkradio.com for all things Primetime Kitchen. We'd love you to listen to the show Friday nights at 8 o'clock, Sunday mornings at 8 as well. And a big thanks to all of our sponsors, and that includes Wassie's Meats, SunshineStateEggFest.com, Mike Oliver Holmes, Porky's Barbecue at Apopka, and Goldsmith Jewelry on Lee Road. Remember, Mother's Day is coming up. This is the place that made my wedding ring for Tori. Uh, this is the place that makes all my jewelry gifts for Tori. Uh, they're awesome people. 40 years. He's an Army vet. He's a good dude. And we've been supporting David for a very long time. We couldn't be happier to have him on board. So, guys, thanks again for watching the show. This is Primetime Kitchen, episode 40, and it is Shepherd's Pie. You guys have a great week, and we hope to see you at the Sunshine State Egg Fest this Saturday. Come on out. For me and Tori, we'll see you guys See you guys. Bye. See you next Tuesday. <laughs>